All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. This is the Co-Travel Podcast with Bob Piercy. And today, this is actually something pretty cool and pretty new. Um, I got two guests on today. Uh, so Tyler McClendon and Mark. And hey, you know what? In all the pre-talk, Mark, I never even got your last name. It doesn't matter, but it's Wagner. Mark Wagner. All right. And these guys are from DOD. Now, uh, I've known I've known Tyler here for quite a few years. Uh, he's in the dental industry. Um, and we've been working side by side. And you know, He's out in Vancouver. But we're actually going to do something different today. We're kind of going to interview each other because we both have our own podcast. Um, and we're just going to kind of hit it off. So, guys, um, Dentist on Demand, um, I want to know the backstory. How did you guys know each other? Where did this idea come from? And what are you guys doing right now? Actually, uh, Tyler just picked me up hitchhiking about 10 years ago. And uh, we hit it off. He had two coffees in his hand. It was just, yeah. I couldn't help it myself. Me- it was me- and, and you've kept him in that wooden shed wherever you guys <laughs> yeah, were recording this video it. right now. So yeah, We have nicknames for each other, but I don't think they're appropriate for this, for your show. Yeah. Well, okay. Actually, we, uh, we, we met, I guess, like 10 or 11 10 years, years ago. 10 or 11 years ago, playing hockey. Ty actually yeah. brought me into the dental world, so it's his fault. A couple of good Canadian kids playing hockey. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, oh, Mark, you got to get into dental. It's great. <laughs> so here I am, you know, 10, 10 years later. What did I know? I, little did I know, hey, Bob? Yeah. Well, that's basically the same timeline where you and I met. So, yeah, yeah back then you knew almost nothing. And I, I knew probably less. But uh, anyways, yeah. yeah, here we are now. So a couple yeah, of really- rock stars with our own podcast, right? Yeah. So and we and. You know, in the evolution of that, obviously, uh, Bobby, you know, I've been great colleagues and friends for a few years and uh, same with Mark and I. So when we got into dental together, uh, I was like, you know, I, I always dabbled in this sort of multimedia side of things. I was like, you know, let's show products on my back then. It, we, we were calling the podcast back in 2014. Remember I did that Dental Bite series where we'd have products that I'd feature on my show, uh, actually in the studio. Um, and then this is, you know, six or seven years later, this is kind of what it's evolved to. And Really, it's more for us, like just at the very starting point, it's you and I and Mark, we know so many great dentists in Canada and the US. Um, the genesis of Dentist on Demand is really to um, improve access to oral care because we know so many great dentists. And if I can, if I can, if you can, if Mark can, if we can help sort of tell their story, uh, whether it's putting them on the DOD platform, whether it's shooting a video for them, whether it's having them on a podcast, there's so many tools at our disposal now to really help our dentists, um, our dentures, our specialists, all these, these wonderful dental professionals tell their story and you know, help educate the public on what they do and why they want to come see them. That's really the genesis of what Dentist on Demand is. Right. And taking the storytelling part, you know, helping them do that. Like it, every dental practice is, they want to be busy and they want to be busy doing dentistry. So we really take that piece away from them, from not away from them, but um, we leverage their story on Dentist on Demand and uh, use our tools so that, you know, that storytelling is more effective across marketing platforms. And I guess that, that sounds great. Uh, it's my, just a little deeper or maybe even not as deep as you guys just went like w- on the simplest forms like what is Dentist on Demand? Because there's a lot of platforms out there right now that talk about marketing, whether it's uh, text messaging or emailing, social campaigns, or actual just regular marketing agencies that you could use to do a website and SEO. Like what does Dentist on Demand specifically do that's different than those? And how are you guys uh, kind of leveraging that in the dental industry? So there's there's two there it, it's, it, it's there's two sides to it. So the the first side is we're drawing new patients with marketing. We're bringing them into our environment and we have a whole periphery of tools surrounded around Dentist on Demand just to make that process from patient out there and then patient into practice um, frictionless, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think, I think at its, at its core, Dentist on Demand is a content driven dental directory. Yeah. So a dentist can jump into the Dentist on a Man platform at an $8.99 like level, like almost like a Netflix subscription, just saying, you know what, I want to be involved in this somehow. Mm-hmm. There's a tool in, with there's a tool for me within the Dentist on a Man ecosystem somewhere. And the more our clients learn about what we do, they can pick and choose what they want to use. You know, what they use this month might be different from what they use next month on a marketing level. But we're not really like when it comes to what we do and who we are, what our DNA is, we're different from marketing companies because we're we're really a hybrid. So though we have partners in the marketing world, so we work with a lot of different marketing agencies to say, hey, you know what, 
this client needs a website built. So we're going to introduce you to this marketing firm because right. you know, we don't, you know, we're a hybrid. So we're really about generating traffic, creating content for you. When it comes to the nuts and bolts, online marketing stuff, we like to leave a lot of that to the professionals. That's not really what we do. So that's kind of the difference between us and a traditional marketing company. Yeah. And we actually work with a lot of dentists, the marketing company that they're already using. So, mm -hmm. um, the goal is to drive new patient traffic, um, to drive recall, to drive case acceptance, all that drive good reviews. stuff. Drive reviews is another big one. Yeah. So a lot of these are drivers there. Here's a good example. So right now, like as a sole proprietor, if you're, if you're a dentist and you need, you know, you need to market, everyone knows they need to spend marketing dollars, but it's like, okay, well, where do I start? Mm -hmm. You know, like I know I got to be on Google. I know I got to be ranked somewhere right. on that. Well, yeah. Google's kind of, Google's good. They're doing a lot of great things. And they're also doing things like the perceptions out there are like, well, it's too expensive to get into that. How do I get ranked on it? Mm -hmm. But Google's actually like, they're pretty brilliant the way they roll things out. And yeah. what I mean by that is you can pay to get advertising on Google, mm. or you can be smart about it and create some really cool, engaging content. And then you can utilize that, you know, in whatever social media platform you want, they're giving you lifelines to say, you don't have to spend a ton of money. If you're smart about your marketing, if you create content, mm -hmm. if you're putting engaging stuff out there and engaging with your audience, you can drive your SEO as well, uh, doing those. Like, and beginning on, on the organic side. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you're paying, um, across every platform, you're paying for a click, right? So it's how to reduce that cost of the click. And there's all sorts of methods to do that. Yeah. And that's really where we dive in is that how can we get you? So your pay-per-click, say if you're paying $10 per click to bring patients to your practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what are all the different tools that we can use to help you bring that cost down? Number one, and number two, you know, ideally not have to pay anything for any clicks. That's mm -hmm. kind of what the end goal is. Well, organically, it's tough. It is yes, tough, yeah. obviously. But everyone's kind of trying to move in that direction. Yeah. Let's if try you, to get that cost down. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, organic, so, or, organic is a good way to test out what you're doing. Right. Okay. So I guess to push you a little bit here, just to kind of, so if I'm a dentist running a practice, I could, you know, pay Google for clicks. I can, I can advertise directly on Google. Mm -hmm. Or I could honestly engage a firm like yours and, and pay you uh, i'm still paying money but in, in in the end result is i'm going to get clicks and views and hopefully patients um i guess what i'm kind of thinking is by having the content that you guys are I'm paying you to create that content is going to last me well i'm going to have that content forever and it can be repurposed reused yeah, uh, yeah. It, and so really there's i'm getting more by paying a, a company like yours to create content for me to help me create content than to simply just buy an ad space on on Google and do Google words or something like that. Is yeah. That um, and, and, and the question to, that I would ask all dentists out there is like, you're paying money. What, what's your, what are you paying for that traffic? You're paying for traffic, right? What are you paying per click? Right. Um, and I guarantee it because I follow the analytics and data. He's an analytic freak. <laughs> I'm a nerd. So he spends all day looking at analytics. I follow, it's... I've got three screens up and I'm looking at all like who's clicking on what, where they're coming from, what the trends are. My phone goes all day. Our, look at this stat. Yeah. Look, look at this number. <laughs> look at, look this, look at this ad we bought. We I paid three cents for this. That. Like and it's really cool. Dennis on demand's goal is to, you know, the money that we accept from our clients, we're going to make those dollars go further than you know, some marketing agencies are, are charging like up to $10,000 a month. You know, it's a scary amount of money. But it, it is, but it's, but it's justified, right? Yeah. I mean, we're certainly not here to point fingers at any marketing yeah. firms at all, because that's what it costs to market yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have the tools to say, like, if you like what you're seeing, you know, the, the dentist has those dials in, in, in their hands. Like if they want to get more, we show them the analytics that, this is what we're getting for you. If you want more, well, we have the opportunity to do a, an additional boost and, and go from there or, or deploy more tools or, you know, it's, it's an a la carte. It's, you want to turn the, the computer screen around and, and show results. And I, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. If you can show it and you can show that you've created something, then really basically it becomes an, a gas pedal. You push the gas harder. You're going to go faster. You're going to get more return. Yeah. I remember Tyler back when first starting, like seeing an example uh, PL statement for what a, you know, an ideological dental office would look like. And back 10 years ago, 
they're saying that marketing dollars should be three to four percent of an ad campaign. So and t- would you say that's the same now, or like in this world where now digital's taking no, off? Like, yeah, so, it's, so like it's closer to ten. Um, marketing is like putting a vending machine in your house, and you put a dollar in it, and you want two to come back, right? The goal is is you know looking at at those analytics and that data, and you're putting a dollar in and seeing 10 back, right? So that's so that's the sort of the goal with it. Um, there's all sorts of tools and different things to use out there, but it's right using the right mix of those tools to essentially put that dollar in and see 10 come back, you know, put that dollar in and see 20 come back, right? And it's obviously market specific, right? So I yeah. mean, what we're seeing in Canada, the marketing budgets, maybe there's a three to four, three to five percent range in the US. I think it's probably higher because yeah. there's more dentists, it's a little more competitive for for patient acquisition there. Um, so uh, but I wanted to quickly go back to your content comment about um, paying for Google ads or paying for and we're not picking on Google. It's like Google's there. It's you a, need it's, it. a, it's yeah. a it's a force of nature. You, you need your reviews. It. Yeah. You reviews are, yeah. are yeah. SEO. So for, currency. Call it to call it a search engine for now. Yeah. But my point is that so with with content, what we do is we like a marketing firm, it's really expensive to create content. Yeah. So because we're in dental, we can create dental specific content for pennies on the dollar, not pennies, but you know what I mean, a fraction of the cost of what it costs someone else to do. Mm-hmm. So we can create that content. We're fully outfitted on a technological, you know, cameras, mics, all the rest of it that we need to do it. Yeah. So we can create that content um, at, a, at a much lower cost. And the goal is to basically have a content funnel for our clients and say, there's always going to be this basket of content that we can pull from. Yeah. Let's just keep creating content with you, the client, the dentist, keep sticking that, cataloging that content so that when it's time to run a campaign, hey, you know, this month we're going to talk about uh, breast cancer awareness. We can pull something from the archives and say, you know what, we shot a video mm-hmm. on breast cancer awareness last, you know, six months ago. Let's pull that out and we can repurpose that. Right. And I suggest to you any, you know, anybody that's doing their own marketing out there, get a Google, like get a Google Drive. Anything, Google Drive everything, everything, yeah. anything that you shoot, take pictures, put it into that drive because you can pull from that. That's where you're cataloging your, all yeah. your content. Yeah, and and that's sort of your 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 you know your storyboard where you can pull from. So, and it's great because you can organize it. You can basically create all these different folders and say, you know what? Yeah, you can go by month, you can go by week, you can yeah. go by different themes. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's really cool the way you can you can catalog all your 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 content and then pull it out later where it's for uh, for later campaigns. Yeah. Now, so when I think of Google Drive, I'm basically just thinking of like cloud storage, like that's Dropbox. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. use and a so- Dropbox or or you know. Yeah, we use, we use Google Drive, but like, I, I love Google Drive because it's, I think it's the best, but we use, okay. it's up, we use Drive, we yeah. use Dropbox, we use two or three different types. So yeah, we yeah. just, is there any so advantage, more. any advantage in SEO in regards to you know, helping Google help you by using Google Drive over no. other sources or is it just, okay, just, it, no. it's a, <laughs> it's a tool you guys like and recommend. Um, and you got to so pay, I, I, so. sorry, go on. You got to pay for storage. So, yeah. If you, you know, the, the right. more, the more storage you have, the more it costs you per month. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and Tyler, I guess like, telling stories is kind of your, your forte. It's kind of your background. You have, uh, um, you talking- please, like, <laughs> what am I talking about? Tyler, like, uh, what's your IMDb account? Like, what's that look like these days? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, you're right. Like, I mean, I, I come from, I, this is definitely in my wheelhouse, right? So telling stories and, um, I mean, I do have a BFA in theater after all. I do have a, uh, my training is in story writing. So we do, I mean, not to to our own horns, but we do bring basic story structure into content creation. And uh, I'm not sure if this is the segue that you wanted to go on, but um, in terms of content creation, like this is kind of something that I, I'm passionate about. So Mark is the technical guy. He's the, he puts everything together and he measures the numbers and makes sure we're getting a good return for our clients. But I'm the content creation guy. I'm looking at stuff going, well, does this tell a story? What type of message are we putting out for the client? Um, is there a beginning, middle and end? So I can look at this stuff from a creative perspective, you know, my years of creating films and, and plays and script writing and all the rest of it and go, okay, well, what's, what story do we want to tell here? What's the message? Mm-hmm. What's the plot line for this? Do we have a plot line for the practice? Do we have a plot line just for mm-hmm. this person? What's actually, so those elements of, of storytelling do go into what we, what we craft for our clients at Dennis on the Mirror. So and, I, and that gets tricky sometimes because not all these clinicians want to be in front of a camera too, right? So it's, you got to yeah. be super creative with how you tell that story. And that's cool too, because there's a, there's a lot that goes into dental practice, as you know, Bobby. So for us, it's like, hey, you know what? 
you don't want to be in front of the camera, no problem. We've got a hundred other things we, we got, can spotlight. Yeah, absolutely. About you. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting, and, a, we're um, getting a drone, so that's going to be fun. You're getting a drone. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I actually, I, I shot some drone footage up for a couple of clients of mine, uh, not last summer, but the summer before, just uh, aerial footage of, of, of clinics from parking lots just to kind of so they get incorporated into their, their websites or their SEOs. Because um, I've got a drone too. It's kind of fun to rip around on. Um, but I, I guess one thing that just, um, a conversation I had a couple episodes ago was on, on marketing and advantages of marketing. And we're talking about how do uh, how does a, a sole owned like GP practice compete against the DSOs? Great question. And one of the things that kind of came up um, was kind of what you're talking about in terms of the storytelling is that you know the DSOs or these corporate organizations they really struggle in the personalization of dentistry, yeah. and a lot of GPs in my mind kind of shoot themselves in the foot by using the same stock photos on their website, yeah. and it's it, they're not telling that story. But you're also very true in saying that a lot of doctors don't want to be in front of the camera. Uh, yeah. It just seems to be a, a common personality trait amongst dentists. It's not specific to so, dentists. That's, so, that's, a, that's a human thing. You know, if you're not used to it, you're not going to want to do it. Yeah, 100%. And here's a, here's a Gary V uh, um, tidbit. Um, we love Gary v. Quality, quality of content is subjective. Right? That's every, a great if every, point. If everybody's worried about how it looks, oh, it doesn't look great. It, sometimes it comes off looking and feeling better when it's more real like that. So get a little brave, get in front of that camera, like get used to it because that's the way the world's going. And I think for, a, for a solo GP out there, I think that's makes them stronger to tell their own story. Yeah. And it's, it's well, and it just to kind of, for myself to look in the mirror, that's exactly the same way I am with this. Like yeah. I'm not in a, in a studio, I'm up in my, my, my bonus room. I, uh, and my, my thought is too, like the, the rawness of it, it kind of has an authenticity to it as opposed to if it is too polished, if, if I am making too many cuts and edits, and if I'm really scripting out these conversations I'm having, mm. it's not going to be as authentic. It's not going to appear as real. 100%. And people are, aren't going to, ho hopefully they trust me more doing it the way that I'm doing it. So I think what you say is, is 100%. Look, what, why is TikTok so popular right now? 100%. Well, it's yeah. full it's compared to. Right. And TikTok yeah. rewards the creators too, which I love, right? So, and I mean, what do you, what do you have to hide at the end of the day? Like it's, it's, we're all going to make mistakes. I've mm -hmm. been up here. I've been recording. I've said stupid things. Um, I've a said lot. things. That, thank you. <laughs> Mark can attest to it, but I've said things, you know, like in front of the camera where I'm like, oh, wow, that sounded bad. I hope I didn't offend that person. Yeah. hope I didn't say something offside. I hope that wasn't offensive to our viewers. Like those ideas come through your head. But after a while you're like, well, wait a second. I'm a pretty good person. I don't put my foot in my mouth too much. Well, I mean, Bob, you can probably uh, argue that. But my point is, you're, we're in front of the camera and we're just kind of being ourselves. And this went back to something we were talking about at the PDC last year is that um, people are going to come. It helps your audience figure out if they want to come see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're a dentist and you're like, here's like, if, I'm, if Tyler McClendon is a dentist and I'm up here talking, not everyone's going to like me. That's just reality. Right? There's going to be a segment of the population that watches this and they look at me and they go, yeah, not for me. His head's too shiny or something. His, head, his, his face is too washed <laughs> out. He's got some weird shadow over his head. Yeah. But people aren't, there's not everyone's going to like me, but guess what? The people that aren't sure are like, you know what? I like what he has to say. He's saying something interesting. That really, tri that really triggers me. I get that. I understand um, something about my past history, whatever it is. Basically, what we're doing is we're relating to our audience. We're saying, yeah. here's who I am. Here's what I do. Not everyone's going to like it, but the people that do, then they, then you got patients coming through your door and they're like, Hey, I feel like I know you. And, and you know what that is at the nucleus of that it's trust. It's trust. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and a patient, a patient one wants to lay in that chair and they trust those eyes looking down at them. That's and it. it doesn't have to be a ton of content. Like you, like, and, yeah. I, and I say this all the time. If you just start small, hi, I'm Dr. McClendon. Yeah. I just want to say hi or I'm new to this. Um, how I'll, about I'll come back on next week? I'm Dr. Dr. McClendon. You know, this is how I like my coffee. You know? We'll see you next and, time. I come back on the camera. Humanize. Again, like, that might not land with some person, but like, it's going to land better than just a stock photo of, of a person that, that doesn't work or isn't a patient of your practice. Like how is that beneficial? How is that going to have any draw or any, you know, um, positive influence towards the practice? And you got to think to too. Yeah. You, like when people are looking at stuff, they're flicking. Yeah. They're flicking through. Yeah. You know, what's going to stop that their eyes, you know, and if they see that stock photo 
they've probably seen something or felt something like that before. They're just going to keep going. It's like people have like an ad radar, right? Oh, mm. it's something flashy. Okay. People really want to, you know, there's a huge um, push to um, have like real non-fake unique, unique um, um, connection interactions, connections. interactions, you know, right now we're just getting blasted with so much stuff and it's so cookie cutter. There's so much noise yeah. out there Yeah, that if you're not telling a compelling, unique, authentic story, mm -hmm. no matter what, how you come across on the camera, if it's not unique, authentic and interesting, yeah. You, not, not only are you not going to get heard, you won't exist. Yeah. And you, and, and, and I'll add to that. I'll piggyback off that's, that's dentist on demand. We're going to help our clients do that and coach them. So do you guys actually host uh, your own clients, your dental clients and lab clients on the podcast and interview them for the purposes of marketing that to potential customers, potential patients? You know what, Absolutely. you know what a, you know what a podcast is absolutely fantastic for. Um, and I've coined this as the content vortex, right? So Great word. out of, out of a, out of a podcast, like we're doing now, we have audio, which we're going to put on Spotify, iTunes, all sorts of different, you know, spots there. Um, and then we can clip it up in videos on cool little sound bites for YouTube or uh, Vimo or whatever, and cut it down even further. And we got little bits for, for Instagram and Facebook. You get so much out of a podcast. It's absolutely fantastic. So if the answer to your question is absolutely. Yeah. It's a content rich. And, and you know, like I, I, I saw this, somebody wrote this the other day. It's like, you know, you try and get on the call with somebody these days and like, I don't have any time for a call, right? I don't have time to call. Hey, do you want to jump on my podcast? And you literally then have an hour long conversation with them extracting all the great bits, yeah. right? It's such a powerful tool. And you know what? There, there's a lot of great podcasts out there and a lot of people are listening to podcasts. So it's a, it's a great forum. No, I, I love it. Like I, I got into podcasts um, years ago, just driving around my car. I got tired of listening to music yeah. and it, it, it was a uh, migration from music to audiobooks, And then from audiobooks, books, went into podcasts and that's, that's what opened me up to the this whole medium and what also made me want to do one myself because again there's so many ways you can you can chop it up it's, it's in, you can make your as niche as you want in, in yeah. regards as we're both doing we're both in the dental space and that kind of seems like a very niche area and of course it is um but again it, it's Inform information uh, rich though right so there's so cool. much information you can pull and talk about and it's great you know like there's so much to teach in dentistry too so there's so many conversations to to be had like on different specialties or you know like the the the, the conversation is, is exactly. limitless and you know we talk about getting into into dental 10 years ago like even these 10 years we can talk about all the change right well there's 10 mm -hmm. years of history now of us being in the dental industry where it's like we can draw on our experiences and say, you know, this is, this is going to flavor yeah. my, my opinion of that particular topic. Yeah. Specific to dental. So it, um, it builds community too. It's and awesome. I, and I, and I kind of like that segue, Bob. So like, I know you're interviewing us and I, by the way, I love being interviewed. Like it's a nice change because <laughs> we're always the guys interviewing. So like you're a fantastic interviewer. I think you do a really tremendous job at this. So yeah, good job. Uh, Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. But your segue, like, I just want to throw it back to you. Like, so like, how did you get started? Like, I mean, I know, you and I've talked about doing podcasts for a few years now. Um, what was your impetus to get started? Well, this whole thing really first started, um, actually, I had, have had, I've had an interest in this obviously for a while. And again, like I said, it became because I was a fan of podcasts and I listened to podcasts driving around make, between, I made, between making my dental calls all day. Um, so obviously interested in the medium. And then really the, this thing started because of COVID. Um, you know, we came back from the PDC, you talked about the PDC and I was my almost interrupted you and said, you know, the good old days like before all this, you know, COVID happened. Um, but we came back from the, the very media uh, covered PDC in Vancouver where dentistry yeah. was getting lit up because of a COVID exposure yeah. and lockdown, shut down, rent our house for three weeks or more, just waiting around. But there's a need to um, still want to communicate with your clients. And, you know, we're salespeople and, you know, we get paid by selling. But at the same time, we're also, we, we like to think that we're helping our clients. Um, so really, that's really our, our, our goal is to, is to provide information and help. And there's a ton of information at the time 
in regards to how to handle your um, your team at the clinic, um, how does an office shut down safely? How do they prepare to open up safely so that there's let, you know not as much uh, mechanical issues and this whole gamut of information. And um, we were sending out a ton of emails and then actually, you know, um, at the PDC, Tyler, you introduced me to BombBomb. Right. Uh, and so BombBomb is a platform I've used, uh, again, since the PDC, and I planned on using it, um, it regardless, but COVID just made it much more. And so BombBomb, for people that don't know, is a way to actually embed video directly into the email. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm actually excited to say that actually Justin from BombBomb is going to be a guest in the near future as well. Oh, nice. that's um, cool. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah, a fantastic guy. And again, I think BombBomb is a really great tool that offices could use to help, again, promote that personal touch by, by sending video emails to their clients. But anyways, um, I started scheduling Zoom conversations and I, I record the Zoom conversations with professionals in the dental industry. We were talking about COVID a lot initially. Um, and then I sent those videos out to my clients via BombBomb. And that's just kind of where this started. And then as I started getting some good feedback on, on these videos and these conversations as I was having, um, coming into January or, or December story, and I thought like, well, how can I take this to the next level? And so I started considering the podcast form and also because the podcast gives me an opportunity to extend the conversation mm-hmm. when I was strictly doing video, you know, when a person looks at a video, cause I know when I look at a video on YouTube, I'm like, do I have five minutes and 43 seconds to watch this? Or am I going to save this for later? Or can I commit 17 minutes, you know, um, or should I get back to work? Um, so the videos I wanted to keep short um, and, and dense. And also I, with the whole authenticity thing, I don't want to do really any editing or post-production. So I want this to be authentic. So uh, I figured if I make this uh, shorter, there's less chances that I'm going to have like a verbal blunder or, uh, or, or dead air. So less stuff to mix up. Mix, um, and then, but then the podcast allows you to go past that because again, people are listening in the cars. Maybe they're listening in the gym or, you know, who knows, maybe it, I don't think a dentist would be listening to a podcast while they're doing a dental procedure. That's probably too much to ask for, but it's distracting. It just, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might. Um, but again, it just gives the opportunity. And so that was kind of like the, the, the arc of how this whole thing started. And, um, and also too, Tyler, you were a bit of an inspiration in this. You were supportive in the, in the conversations. You know, I shared a lot of the videos I did yeah. and you were the one telling me that this was, I was, I was doing good work. So um, part of this is, you know, you get the part of part of the blame on this. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I guess that, that's kind it of is good. And that, and that not to get you off, Bob, but like, like I, for your podcast, for example, like I'll go to the gym, like I've been trying to get in shape, like, you know, COVID for me has been okay, well, you know, let's focus on some inner reflection, like, what can I do to make mm. myself better? Right? You know, there is less windshield time, right? Like, we're seeing less clients, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. we're limited in, in FaceTime. So, um, so I'm on the elliptical, or I'm, I'm up at four or five in the morning, like ungodly hours trying to get into shape. What am I doing? I'm sticking my earbuds in and I'm on the treadmill and I'm listening to your podcast for 20 to 20 minutes while I'm, uh, while I'm on the elliptical at the gym. So for me, if I want to say like, and that's why I think the power of your podcasts are so powerful, because if a dentist wants to hear about a new product or a service or, or, or a new software or a way to increase their SEO, and you've had that topic on your show, and they're doing something like I'm doing, or there's a, there's a time where they're doing something kind of pedestrian, where like either they're driving or they're 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 working out or whatever it is. I mean, that's when they're listening to what's new on the Bob Piercy podcast. And I think co-travel with Bob Piercy. <laughs> co-travel with Bob Bob Piercy. Yeah, you get it. You're gonna get it, get it. Get the name out there. Um, got it right. And yeah, one that's I, I agree completely. It's just it, it's it's a. I think first of all, it was an interest. So I think it's, it's hard to do something that you're not interested in. So obviously I was interested in this. So it was give you the passion to kind of get behind it and do it. Um, and also I've, I, at this early stage, I've already at this point, you know, referred uh, clients to, Hey, I had a podcast talking about this and I sent them the, the link to the podcast or the video and I've, I've already used it. Um, yeah, and right. again, and also too, trying to communicate with our clients, Tyler, as you know, again, you walk into the, the clinic and you hope they're busy. You really do. If a dentist is sitting around in their, in their back office with nothing to do and except talk to their rep, you know, maybe there's some other things that, you know, we should be looking at or discussing with the practice, but sure. you hope that they're busy. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, even just going back to the videos that I sent out before the podcast, I had doctors comment like, you know, Hey, they, 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 they did their day of work. They came home, they, you know, spent some time with the family. Now it was end of the evening and they're just kind of winding down and they, they saw that I sent an email with a video. Well, Hey, let, let's listen to what Bob has to say. So they, they'd play it and watch it or listen to it. 
And whether it was discussing some equipment they're looking to purchase or some new government program that's coming into that's going to help with COVID relief, that was they chose a time to to listen to it. So they were more open to listening to it and absorbing the information in in the message than if I was you know trying to catch them between patients in a busy clinic. That's so again, it comes down to they get to choose when they when they consume this on their terms. And and, and there's nothing's ever going to beat a face to face you know knee to knee you know in-person conversation. But, you know, I think this is a pretty good alternative to, you know, a handwritten email or, you know, typed out email. It, well, it, sta also, it stages further conversation. Yeah. And it also separates, you know, when you talk about bomb bomb, you know, when, as you're scrolling through your, you know, 76 unread emails that day, <laughs> and you see an email with, with Bob's face on it and he's talking to you, you're like, well, oh, well, he, this email is actually talking to me. So I'm yeah. going to open that one first, right. you know, so that's, that's there, yeah, too. there's a reason why we included bomb bomb in our for free of services. It's a great tool. Yeah, it's a great tool. We use it as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's oh, okay. for sure. Um, and, and, but and we just, you know, the, the, the three of us just spent the last few minutes gushing about podcasts and videos and how, but at the same time, I have had clients say, look, can you just type out an email? <laughs> and so, uh, they that's, just they just want to read text and that's that's them so i'm not insulted by that so what i you know now how i've adapted is when i'm sending out videos i will incorporate like you know hey please watch the video above and i'll i'll put like some bullet points below in the in the email as to if all they want is the the text and the, and the, the facts and they can get it but um i've got a lot of good responses on on the video and the email and you're again, getting not to make this a conversation or <clears throat> yeah, it, you know, we all want options. We all want to you know, choose our options. I, I'm the same way. Um, so yeah, so you just have to kind of figure out what people want, how they want to receive the information and, and, and conform to that. Um, the it. one the commercial I'll, I'll, I'll continue with bomb bomb is I, I think any dental office would benefit by end of the day, sending a five minute video to every single patient that came in the door that day. The hygienist should do it. The doctor should do it. Just like, hey, Tyler, thanks for coming. Great to see you. 20 Great seconds video. That, yeah. Like, 20 seconds. And again, you can make the call. But when I call you on the phone, I'm calling you when it's convenient for me. And it might not be convenient yeah. for you. You know what would be powerful? So we, so we actually have a software, Dentist On Demand, where you can text out um, an automated review request. Mm -hmm. So this is new to Dentist On Demand. We just basically okay. built this into the program uh, yeah. last week. So now we now have a, a, an automated, so the same way you would send out a recall reminder automated through whatever software you're using, you can now through Dennis on demand, you can send out an automated review request. Mm -hmm. So imagine sending out a review re request with a bomb bomb video saying, Hey, it was great to see you today. I hope everything heals up. Well, you have my number. If anything, you know, if you have any concerns or if you're experiencing some, some pain and Hey, if you had a great experience today, right below me here, just click on that button and then you you'll be able to give me a review. It'll take you two seconds. Yeah. That's so smart. giving the dentist the power to, well, to empower their team with this tool to say, Hey, reviews. I mean, I think we know most people know now reviews are critical in dental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have an automated program built into your office where you're like, Hey, not only are we asking for the review via text or email, we're actually attaching a video to it from the dentist or from the treatment coordinator, whoever's mm -hmm. sending them out to say, it was great to see you today, please, you know, uh, you give us a four or five star or whatever, you know what I mean? Give us a review. Um, and we'll see you uh, at your hygiene appointment in three months or six months. And here's a good segue to teledentistry, right? Like yeah. For a, um, for a dentist with a, with a, or for the staff too. That's another um, tool in our belt is the virtual consultation. And it, you know, in the beginning it was like, I don't know if it's a good fit for the practice. And then we're looking at yeah. some of these practices. It's so it's like, such an interesting like, point. 1500 minutes logged in, in the month of January. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Teledentistry is easy. Like, that's, yeah. that's an, that's an easy one for us because like when we first sort of cut you off Mark, yeah. but like when we first started talking about teledentistry, which again, it's something within the dentist on demand ecosystem where we say, you know what, you might want to consider having some virtual consults with people. Yeah. The initial response to teledentistry from a lot of people was like, ah, it's not for me. I don't really want to get on a camera and talk to patients. That's now changed. Yeah, okay. So, and because Tyler, we've had lots of conversations about this over the years. So I'm, I was actually, I was waiting for you guys to bring this up and, and I'm, I'm glad okay. you did. And I'm surprised you, it didn't, be, it wasn't the first thing out of your mouth, but um, <laughs> so again, tell us dentistry, like, what is this? Like, what are you actually offering these doctors? Like, what is this? Like, like yeah, please start over. Like, 
tell it. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll jump into this. Um, it's it's become. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of things. Um, to say, hey, patient, nice to meet you. It's going to be great to see you in the practice. Have a fifteen, you know, five minute conversation and for new patient acquisition. It is great for let's talk about this big case. You know, we, we're showing now visuals on a, on, a, on a screen with the patient. They're in their house. You're talking about doing this big cosmetic case. You just put an implant in a patient post-op. You know, how is it healing? There's all sorts of great um, uses for it. And, and, and you know, we're, we're brainstorming things, new things every single day. And it just, it just enhances um, access to oral care just that much more. It's a fantastic tool. And you know, the, the people that are jumping on board with it are realizing that very quick. We, we've got um, Sarah that's going to come on, a treat, treatment coordinator, that she gushes to Tyler like on a daily basis, like, oh my God, I, don't, I can't imagine my life without this tool anymore. Like we're taught- she, she, They wouldn't be able to run their practice without virtual consult. Yeah, like they're, they're, they're closing case, like case acceptance has gone through the roof and, you know, their connection with their patients are being, it's, it's just a, I think it's the biggest, um, disruptor to hit dentistry and it, or it, one of the largest ones. And, for sure. and okay, it's, so, so this is actually, this is a video conversation, a video call, a zoom call, kind of yeah. like we're having now hmm. with a doctor and a patient talking about anything from welcome to the clinic as a new patient to yeah. discussing a major case. So the patient doesn't actually have to come into the dental clinic to yeah. take this call. They could do it the convenience of their own home. And again, they can have a face-to-face -face conversation with their dentist. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the way we built it at Dentist on Demand, and, and the reason I didn't gush about it or talk about it right at the gate, because it is because we've, we found other tools that are just as compelling. Like I know there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Teledentistry is great. And yeah. we, we are using it and it's going amazingly for our clients. So um, we should talk about it first because we are having a lot of success with it, that mm. and uh, and the content creation and driving people's uh, reviews and their and yeah. their, their their Google rank. Those are the two things that we're really kind of yeah. So right it's now. they see our ads, they come to the site, they're booking virtual consultation, and you can actually book a virtual consultation right off of a Facebook ad if you wanted. So yeah. So for us, the the way we've built it, Dennis on Demand, is the easiest path. the The path of least resistance wins. So if a new client, if a new patient can see your ad on Facebook and look at it and go, wow, I click on that button and a, and a scheduler appears and I pick a time and it automatically sends uh, a teledentistry invite to the dentist and the patient. Yeah. And now the patient is pre-qualifying. The, the dentist has already pre-selected times that they're available. Mm -hmm. The patient just picks the time that the dentist has already put in there or the treatment coordinator, whoever's doing that. Um, then the appointment set up before they even book the appointment, they have to go through a logic field where they're, you know, they're, they're basically filling out a questionnaire. What's your chief concern? Mm -hmm. What's your information? Are you a patient of record? If not, are you willing to sign a COVID release form? You can actually put the HIPAA compliant forms right in that questionnaire as well so that they can fill it out even before the consult happens. Yeah. Um, so the, another the, great tool is another, the, digi digital forms, digital forms is another tool we offer, but, um, so the ability for the patient to within five minutes, see a dentist, like their story, find a spot in their schedule, book a virtual consult and be talking to the dentist or the treatment coordinator, somebody from that office, either same day, an hour later, 50 minutes mm -hmm. later, whatever time it is. Now we've removed all of that friction from the process. And then they go to their, their treatment procedure, leave the practice and away goes the invite to review. Yeah. So, the, the goal for us is to say, when the patient comes to the dentist, they literally, you, if you wanted to, they can drive up, text you that they're there. You text them back and say, yes, come in. They walk in, they get their treatment, they walk out. They've already had the conversation about that treatment before they've put a foot in the practice. Everything is done online. The only thing that is not being done online is their dental work. Yeah. Which has to be done well, they, in they the chair. Try. I mean, they, yeah. they might have some <laughs> tools at <laughs> home, but I don't well. recommend that at all. But so that, so No, no, I don't either. So when we say that, it's acknowledging the fact that, yes, of course, it's dentistry. The, the patient has to come in and have work done in their mouth. But everything else can be taken be, being taken out of the office. It doesn't need to happen there. So does that mean you need to left staff? No. It, people, these jobs exist. People still need to stay in the office or stay as part of the office, whether they're working from home or remotely. 
these administrative tasks still need to get done, but now it's in a streamlined, more efficient manner. And I think that's it's, it's really sort of trimming a lot of the fat out of the admin that dentistry carries. Yeah, it's it's have that huddle in the morning and uh, and uh, away they go. It's focus on dentistry and not and less of the administration part of it. Two areas. One well, and that- cosmetic, ortho, big time, right out of the gate. And new new patient too. Let's not fool new ourselves. Like it 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 exposes, it allows the the patient to connect with the dentist before they get to the practice. Yeah. And interview. well, and the thing that just makes sense to me too is just going back to again we were talking about earlier and just like you know the the authentic the authentic feel of it. Stumbling on my words here, but also like they get to know the dentist or the height or the treatment coordinator, people at the clinic before they even get there. And you so, know what the, the chances of that patient not canceling and going to their to their appointment has increased, right? It has to. I I I can only see, I'm sure you're you're still gonna get some people that cancel, but at the same time, you've already made that connection, that visual connection. You've already met that person, you know, via instead of in person, via you know, a, a Zoom type call. Um, so again, it's just you're bringing them into the practice, into the you know, under your wing before they've even step step foot in your door. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it just extends, I think it extends the reach. I think it creates, again, a better uh, experience for the patient. Um, there has to be more flexibility in regards to when some of these appointments can be scheduled. Yeah. Um, and, and again, like you said, you still need to come into the clinic to, to do the work, but um, your time in the clinic can be done more effectively, more, more streamlined. I think the other thing it does too, uh, and this, this falls into the trust bucket, is that it really helps you set expectations with your patients. So like, for example, if I, if I have, um, if I want to interview an employee or if I want a patient to come see me, you know, we're going to talk about why they've come to me that day or why the, why I'm talking to this person. So we're going to establish, you know, we're going to frame the conversation. Why, why are we talking today? So we'll establish that. Once we sort of get to the root cause of why we're talking, um, we'll start to create solutions, create options for them. And then we'll start to say, you know, does this a real expectation? Is this, does this sound reasonable to you? Is this something that you might be interested in? There's obviously an interviewing style that can sort of, you know, people can use, they can make it their own, however they want, but then you're setting expectations to say, here's what to expect when you come to our practice. And the more you can educate a patient on what to expect when you come to the practice, here's what I'm like, here's what you're going to, here's what you're get, what you're going to get this when you come to the practice, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors here. So it takes the anxiety out of it for the patient too. When people, ha- when people know what the expectations are, I think it brings the anxiety level down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, right? um, there's, there's nothing to, there's less thought, like void of thought. Like Everything's more familiar. It's yeah. More familiar. It's also part of the conversation. You're holding up your end of the bargain. You're you know, you're like Dr. Smith and I talked about having this, you know, I was going to, I wasn't sure what to do with this wisdom tooth, whether we're going to pull it or put a crown on it. We both agreed that we're going to put a crown on it. So, you know, as part of my treatment plan, I got to make sure I go back. I got to go back on January 5th to have that done. And, you know, because that's one step in the treatment plan mm. that you have discussed with your patient and they can over even, a virtual consult. They can even talk about like, they go in depth of like, okay, this is what you're going to feel like when we do this procedure too, right? Yeah. I had a, actually, a, um, uh, so one of my, so my dentist is using Dennis on demand. So uh, I use that example because that happened to me. So um, I was, um, I went in and I have this wisdom tooth back here that uh, got beat up pretty bad when I was playing hockey when I was 20 years ago. Um, and it was kind of falling apart. So we were looking at options and he's like, you know what, we can, we can try to crown it, but it's like underneath the bone there. It's a really tricky one to get at. He's like, I'm thinking an online might be a good fit for you. And I was like, you know, let's just do an online and hopefully it sticks. So we did it, but it was a really difficult procedure. I mean, my hat's off to him for getting in there. Cause you got to get right in beside the bone. It was painful. I didn't like the procedure, but I, but I was like, I want it done. Let's I want to, I don't want to lose the tooth. Right. So it's on me to say, you know what? And he did say, he's like, Hey, Ty, like this might not feel very comfortable. Like, are you sure you want to do this? And you know, we double checked a few times and I said, yeah, no, just get it done. I'm, I'm a pretty good patient that way. I can, I have a good high pain threshold. Um, or I guess patients threshold, like, cause it took a long time in the chair to get done. Um, but my point is like, so I went home and I knew it was one of the more evasive things I've ever had done in my mouth, but I was having pain about two or three days later. So I was then like, Hey, I'm still experiencing pain. Now, of course, my dentist is a friend of mine. So I can just text him and be like, Hey, like I'm having pain still. Is this normal? He's like, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. You know, we're good to go. But if I didn't have that personal relationship with my dentist, I being able to hop on a virtual consult afterwards and being able to explain to them, Hey, when you did this only on my tooth, like I'm having pain, 
what do you think out of 10? What do you think? Oh, it's about a six and a half to seven and it's here. And, you know, we now have this tool called the telescope, which you can actually stick in your mouth and mm. take a picture of, you know, any problem areas, but it would have been nice for me to hop on a virtual consult with him and be able to show him what's going on in my mouth. If it's, if it's really inflamed, if I'm bleeding, if there's an exposed root or something going on. Um, and again, the virtual consult would have helped me sort of show that to him. That's kind of a long now, I, I guess. That. No, but it, it, I think it's a great example. Um, I guess one question is, um, what about like HIPAA compliance or like, like, can we do this over Zoom calls? Like, it, yeah. like do you need, um, is there any risk that a dentist assumes by, by doing this with or without dentist, dentist on demand? You, we have all, all of our tools are all HIPAA compliant. Everything's HIPAA compliant. Pipeta, pipeta compliant. So the, 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 mis, the misconception about Zoom is that it's not HIPAA compliant. Well, the free version, not HIPAA compliant. Yeah. That is true. So if you use the free version for doing virtual consults, or if you're talking to a patient over the free Zoom, you are not in compliance with, and in Canada, it's PIPEDA. Yeah. Um, there is a HIPAA compliant, a healthcare version of Zoom, which is actually the Zoom we're talking on right now, which is, I mean, we've run over 45 minutes, but my point is um, there is a HIPAA compliant version of that. So um, also it's really important, the security um, of data collection, medical history forms, if you're doing virtual consults, it, they do need to meet security guidelines. And, and we have an, um, uh, a firm that we deal with, uh, DFI, and we've really picked his brain on how to set this thing up properly. And uh, he's a uh, digital forensics, so he has all sorts of people. He, he's, he's the guy that shows up to the practice when uh, you know, there's a ransomware attack. So he's just one of the smartest guys I know. He, he was a, a, a lawyer turned digital forensics expert. So. We've gone to like three lawyers on this. And we're like, okay, so yeah. where are we exposed on <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. There, we have no loose ends. So that for us is paramount. If we have loose ends, you know, it's like a house of cards, right? So, <laughs> um, so I guess if, if doctors are interested in it, they're... Um, whether it's virtual consult or some of the marketing that you guys discussed earlier, what's the, the best step? Um, Dentistondemand.com.ca, what's your social media? Where can they find you guys? Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere, yeah. Send us a direct message over Instagram, info at Dentist on Demand. Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, LinkedIn. Like we have TikTok now. TikTok. <laughs> smoke uh, smoke I, I don't We're working on our, our smoke signal machine. So just... <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, like info at dentistondemand.com. I mean, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the most commonly used one. But, yeah. uh, you know, you guys, I mean, mostly it's digital communication. So most people are going to send us an email. We're going to reach out to them and say, yeah, let's let's set up a Zoom call. We'll, we'll show you some of what the, the tools that we offer look like. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, you know, hopping on a call with, with me or Mark or one of our team members to show, like, if there's something specific, yeah. someone dials in on the, um, the review capture uh, product that we have. Yeah. You know, they can just say, you know what, I like everything you guys do. We just want that review tool. tool. Mm -hmm. Then you can just we can do it a la carte, yeah. And we're passionate about this stuff, so happy to talk to anybody. So, yeah. No, guys, hey, uh, this is uh, this has been awesome. Um, I think just you know, I think we should kind of think about wrapping this up. Um, lastly, before we do, is there anything that I haven't asked or haven't touched on that you guys want to address real quick? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> Or what is it? Is it a sandwich or a... We always have these yeah. guests, the, the, the guest questions, yeah. but we're the guests. So he has to ask us. Oh yeah, that's right. Question. Is, a, is a hot dog a sandwich? Well, how, how many times have you, have you asked that question? Twice now. Twice. Okay. All right. So do you, do you have an answer? No, I don't. I, I got a, I've been asked that question. It's, it could be both, I suppose. Okay. You give us your answer and then I'll tell you what my answer was. Oh my goodness. I, I don't think I've, I haven't processed this yet. Uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? No, it's not. No, why? I can't tell you why it's not, but I just don't feel it is. No. Okay. It's a feeling. That's fair. I also said no. And I said no because there's no crust. But the outside of the bun is kind of crust. <laughs> Isn't that? Yeah, I think I think Mark, you're right there. The whole bun is crust. Busted. So it's not crust. Uh, I guess anyway. it's not crust. <laughs> <laughs> uh no, I think we covered a lot of it, man. I think I think it's um, you know, we're we're, we're an interesting, we're, we're a new style of company, I guess, is what you would say. I mean, like, I hate to make that analogy to Uber or skip the dishes or, you know, all these wonderful companies that are popping up They're they're aggregators, they're, they're ways of really taking friction out of the out of the process for people. So, you know, at the end of the day, people are like, what is dentist on demand? What does it do? Well, we're really just there to take all the friction out of seeing a dentist to the point where you literally can go on your phone and be like, Hey, I can talk to this dentist in three minutes. Yeah. Out. 
And Tyler and I are having like eureka moments. Like every single day, I'll send him a text message like, oh my God, this is working, man. It's so cool. <laughs> so, the analytic stuff. We're like, having you know, a lot of fun. Dialing into Google and and mm -hmm. and really driving, you know, reviews, rankings, and the SEO stuff so yeah. that we can, I mean, our clients get a report from us every month and we're yeah. like, here's your traffic report. Yeah. Do you want more? Do you want less? What do you, do you want us to turn the dials up or are you good for now? That for us is the most important thing. Most important piece of this is traffic. like, works look yeah. and that analytics report is, is critical yeah. for us because you know it's we get that a lot where people are like well i'm using a marketing company i just don't know if it's working it's like well you know most marketing companies do offer the analytics behind what they do mm -hmm. um so we want to say okay well you know we're a hybrid right so we're going to give you what you need for a very you know reduced cost now we're not a full-fledged marketing firm so keep that in mind but we're also going to give you some analytics to say here's what you put into the vending machine here's what you're getting back are you happy with that ROI? If we wanted to be a fully fledged marketing firm, we could, but that's not our objective here. We're, we're trying to make the marketing piece for dentists more affordable, easy, like not $10,000 a month, you know? And like automate the content process. Yeah. No one's done it yet. So we and just, have a formula to automate the content creation, curation, generation process. And just it, making oral health that much more accessible to patients. You, you know, guys, I think we could probably keep this going. And I think there's probably enough content here for an, another conversation like this in, in, in the future. So I think we should definitely consider that and, and okay. do that. It um, is Friday and we don't have, uh, you know, a, a cold one in front of us. So this is- It is Friday. Yeah, I've, I've got a, a three-day-old baby downstairs. I got to go kind of you know, oh, hang off. So Did you know I'm, I'm going to go- had a baby? What's that? Did you know Bobby just had a baby? Yeah, congratulations, man. I look great, don't you think? I just had a baby, but- You look uh, well rested, my friend. Have, what's your secret? <laughs> Let's have another hour conversation. There, there you go, right on that. We'll talk about that later too. Um, I guess, you know, just touching on what you just said, just briefly at the end there. Um, when I when I look at Dennis on demand, my, my, my opinion of Dennis on demand is, you know, you talked about analytics and reporting and marketing and, and that obviously that is fantastic and it's needed, but I also see a lot of other people that are doing that as well. The one thing that I have always associated with you guys and you're doing differently that no one else is doing where you talk about the Uber and like those um, skip the dishes and those disruptor businesses is this virtual consultation with a, with a dent, with a patient um, between a patient and a dentist. I think that again, no one's doing that. And if anyone's doing that, they're probably not compliant in the ways that they're doing it in regards to using free zoom as, and not, talking to the, the, the lawyers and professionals you guys have. So I see that as being the, the big disruptor in, in the industry. And um, that, that, that's the thing that interests me in this most. And, and again, you know, for a dentist to, to step out of the comfort zone, to, to take that on, to try that, um, again, it would be as challenging or more challenging than say starting a podcast or really putting, you know, your picture and face and your true message out there. But again, when offices are trying to compete against DSOs or other practices in this growing competitive world, yeah. really, I see that as something that's going to have to happen. Um, you know, back in the day, Tyler, 10 years ago, most practices probably operated Monday to Thursday, you know, nine to five, and people came to the dentist when the dentist had time for them. But now more and more practices are open weekends, more and more practices are doing evenings. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's just because it's becoming more what the patient wants to do. Yeah. And I know doctors struggle with that because they want to do the nine to five. They want to be golfing on Friday. But again, it's again, the industry is changing over the past 10, 11 years. Um, and again, I think with the video console that you guys are offering, it's going to take a lot for people to you know step up to try it. But I think that's really, um, again, 10 years from now, I think I would predict that not just dentists, I think veterinaries and, and medical doctors and everyone else is going to be doing this as well, because again, it's, it's that interactive time with the patient. So that's what I see as the true value. Um, also, there's lots of other value there which you guys offer. But anyways, um, you're guys, totally right. It's going to be totally awesome right. when the vet talks to his dog over a virtual Talk concert. It. <laughs> How's it going down there, Ruffy? You're, you're right. And I, and I think with virtual consoles, with, tel with teledentistry, I think it's just going to be one. It's a service that everyone's going to have to offer mm -hmm. on some level. Um, and really, the secret, the secret ingredient is just getting your reps in. Because the first yeah. five mm -hmm. to 10 consults are going to feel weird, awkward, discombobulated. But once you get 10 to 15, 20 consults in, you're, you'll start to get into a rhythm. Like, okay, I know how I'm going to do this now. And everything new gives you that feel. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just a, new, it's and, a new thing in dentistry. Thing, so right. everyone's just got to get yeah. used to doing it. 
Yeah. But then, you, and also just, again, look at, look at COVID as an accelerator and how COVID has accelerated, you know, the adaptation and changes in so many industries. Yeah. Um, my, my, my sister-in-law is a medical doctor in New York and she was pregnant during COVID. Um, and so she was doing a lot of, me- doing a lot of uh, telemedicine because they didn't want her in the hospital. She didn't want to be in the hospital. And so again, what's happening in the States generally trickles up. It happens in Canada, you know, a few years later. So this is happening in other industries. Um, and again, I, it's, I, I, here's an opportunity to be the, the early adopter into this realm. And again, just more exposure. Again, you're just going to become more comfortable. So anyways, I'm, well, I'm sounding too much like a sales rep on you know what? Like, DOD. Before the guy down, you know, before <laughs> the practice down the streets offering it. A little bit, right? Yeah, it, it'll happen. You you can be first, or you can be, yeah, or you can, or you can be last. Or so, you know, and then, um, anyways, hey guys, oh, you, know, you gotta please. run. Well, I was just gonna say real quick, the one thing that um we do as well, this is, and I know we're, we don't want to uh, go into sales speak here, but we also within that that review capture tool, you can also see everybody else that's on Google around you in your same yeah. in the same industry that you're in. So again, it's it's. I don't like using the word competition in dentistry. I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's more about just making sure that you're telling that unique story. But aside, on top of that, you can sort of measure yourself up against other people who are on Google with that tool that we offer. So I just want to throw that in there, make sure we have that actually in this uh, in this session. But um, going back to what you're saying about you know being a salesman for for dentists on demand, I appreciate all the great things you say about it. But it's really us putting it out there, seeing where people are having success with it. And going, yeah, okay, this is exciting. This actually works. We're mm-hmm. seeing our dentists having success with that. And for us, that's what's that, really exciting. For me, is the hugest reward. It's like yeah. when somebody has our Eureka moment and they're excited about using a tool that we deployed, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if, if, a, if a doctor listening to this contacts you guys, do you guys have those reviews, those referrals, those, the, the, the feedback from your current users that they can listen to, watch, interact with to kind of, to uh, to get that side of the story, yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right. In terms of like a like a testimonial kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, 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 let's not talk to you and me about this. Let's, let's talk to the guys that are actually using this. Guys and girls that are actually using this to get their feedback on how it's yes. affecting their practice. Yeah, that's why we wanted Sarah to come on because um, we just sort of wanted it. We wanted to pick her brain on what she was doing in the six. Like she was like, I'm having so much success with this. Mm-hmm. She's like, I just sold a huge case two days ago. It was amazing. We, we we're all celebrating, excited. And I said, okay, so would you mind coming on our podcast and telling us the, the like, and it's not, it's not making us rich. We're really just giving them this tool. We're just kind of passing it on to, to them to say, you know what, make sure this is giving you some success. So the ROI for her, she's like, we're paying pennies for this tool and it's helping us bring so much more cosmetic dentistry into the practice. So we really wanted to dive into that story and say, okay, well, what are you doing? If you, if you wouldn't mind sharing with us, how's that going for you? How are the patients receiving that? They have patients coming in from Prince George into Vancouver. They're flying into Vancouver for the weekend, having some veneers done and flying home. It's invaluable. And she's cool. getting these people online doing a virtual consult saying, hey, that's cool. We're in Vancouver. You want to come down to Vancouver for the weekend and get your teeth done? Sure. Mm-hmm. Like that for me, that blew my mind just hearing that story alone. We can find those patients out there. That's, that, that's incredible. That really, really is. Um, all right, guys. Hey, I, I think we should uh, put put a pin in this. We're right at <laughs> right at an hour. This is not uh, not intended, but again, it was it was a lot of fun. It, I think there's a lot of good content here, information. Um, thanks so much. Um, I think we should maybe look at doing this again down the road, just to take a deeper dive, more specific dive into Dennis on Demand. But um, hey, guys, I appreciate it a lot. Thanks a lot, and uh, talk to you guys soon. All right, Hi, Bob. It was uh, it was Bob. it was great to be interviewed by you, by you, man. We love we love your podcast, and I'll we'll be, have uh, you on ours next time. Yeah, I mean, you can be a guest on ours. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, All right, guys. We'll sign off. Talk to you. Bye for now. Okay. I will unplug us now. <laughs>